What's up everyone? Welcome back to the letterpress department here at Jukebox and in today's video we're going to be demonstrating how we create a uniquely shaped business card using die cutting, letterpress, and a little bit of hot foil stamping. So we're going to be using three different machines with three different processes as well as a little bit of duplexing before we see how it all takes shape. You're not going to want to miss a single moment so stick around and enjoy the show. Let's start off by mixing the inks that we'll be using today. I'm going to be printing with Pantone 439U, a dark gray, as well as Pantone Warm Gray 5. I've weighed our base inks out in the correct parts and have them ready to mix. A warm gray tone has red base ink in it, while a cool gray tone will have a blue base ink in it. Here's the first plate we'll be printing with. I'll set it in place on our aluminum base and get our first color on press. I'll take an impression onto a spot sheet I've placed over the tinting tape. I'll use this sheet to even out any imperfection in the impression. Next, I'll take an impression onto a plain sheet of paper that is a little larger than what I'll need. I'll use this sheet to figure out what size of stock to cut down for this run. A quick trim on the guillotine and we'll be ready to go. With the press sheets in hand, I'll load the stock into the delivery and make sure my brass leg gauges are in the correct position. Next, I'll increase the impression a small amount and take the first pull. Our print is clean and straight and we're ready to run. The first color printed smoothly, so I'll wash up the press and get ready for the next color.
For the second pass, I'll set up the next die in the same position and start inking up the press with Pantone 439U. The first impression of the second color shows some much needed adjustment from left to right in order to land the registration. To make the adjustment, I'm going to move the entire printing base by moving one piece of leading from one side to the other. This will adjust the print by about two points. That is much better. You can see the target and crop marks are lined up and we're ready to print. Playing out the printed sheets show me that there isn't any movement happening from sheet to sheet, which is necessary for perfect registration. With the second color finished, I'll begin the wash up and get ready for the final color of ink. This is the plate that will be inked up to print a pass of black. Taking a closer look at the first sheet, you can see that I'll have to dial in the registration for this plate too. I once again adjust the position of the printing base by two points and add a small shim of tape to one of the lower brass gauges. With a closer look, you begin to see the detail and the registration of three colors all lining up perfectly. And we're ready to print. For the last pass of black, I want the ink to be as saturated and dark as possible. To help achieve this, I'm going to skip feed the press as it runs. This technique involves tripping the suction and impression knob manually so that only every other sheet is picked up and printed. This ensures that I get twice as much ink on the plate for every impression. It takes a little bit of coordination to pull off, but it's worth being able to get a really saturated and opaque black tone.
Once I've finished, it's time for a quick cleanup before heading on to hot oil stand. You can see how this die is a much thicker piece of copper. Copper is ideal for hot foil stamping as it holds and conducts the heat needed for fine detail or large areas of solids too. I'll lock the die and chase into place and set up the foiling press with an epoxy glass board to stamp against. An impression on the spot sheet will help if we need to adjust any uneven impression, and with the guides in the right spot, we're ready to go. This first impression landed beautifully with perfect registration. The bunting posts in a hot foil chase really help to dial in for pinpoint registration. With the foil releasing cleanly, we're ready to print. Before I start die cutting, we'll do a quick duplexing on our popped ebony gluer to thicken up these cards. I'm adding a piece of color plan ebony for a two-tone, two-ply look. Our last step will be to cut the final shape of these cards. This custom made steel rule die is locked into our die cutting press. I'll set up the brass gauges and lower the overall impression before we begin. The first sheet through the press shows that the cut lines aren't matching up with the crop marks and our sheet isn't being cut through all the way. I'll adjust the steel rule die in the chase by roughly six points up and a few points over. I'll also increase the impression a small amount and see where it lands. There we go. 
perfectly registered to the crop marks while popping out nice and clean. The small hole being popped out is made by a 1 8 hole punch that is set into the steel rule die. These cards are thick enough that they aren't breaking out from the shell during the life. To double check our die cutting registration, I'll jog the shells together along the grip edge to make sure each one has been cut in the exact same place. And now for a closer look at the final product. So what do you guys think? This is a business card that makes the most out of foil stamping and die cutting to create something that you won't soon forget. And of course, be sure to check out our Instagram page to see more work just like this. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're always trying to put out new videos. Leave a comment below if there's anything specific that you'd like to see. But until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.